In part two of this video, we are going to be discussing occupying the base camp area. This occupation will be done by a light force of a platoon to company in size. We've already conducted the quartering party. The main body is now moving towards the anticipated base camp site. The bulk of the quartering party is set up along their platoon's anticipated perimeter pulling security. We've left the security element of six personnel back here, set up in an ambush on our previous line of march to try to catch any enemy, any enemy element that was following us. Now, the main body will be led by the quartering party NCOIC. He will have already made arrangements with the quartering party security that will be at the anticipated entry point. So when they show up, there will be no friendly fire incidents, hopefully. If the quartering party does come under fire from an enemy element before the main body gets there, they're more than likely going to break contact, link up with the main element, they'll pull back, pick up security element, and they'll move on to their alternate location. But we're going to say that the enemy has not followed. Now there's two basic styles for occupying the base camp area. There's the wagon wheel and the triangle. Uh, the triangle, when I've seen videos on it and read about it, it reminds me a lot of the Saddam era Iraqi army triangular defense positions that they used to do in the desert, and I got a feeling that's where the U.S. military got the idea from. I've done primarily the wagon wheel, and that's what I'm going to discuss. I will put in a link in the description to occupying a patrol base that does discuss doing the triangle. Now when we move in, our entry point will be the 6 o'clock of the perimeter. There's two ways we can do this. There's the spoke method and then there's also the regular wagon wheel. In the wagon wheel, the entire element moves along the perimeter of the base camp and each platoon fills in their anticipated area. So we have down here, this would be filled in by third platoon, this would be filled in by second, and this part of the perimeter would be filled in by first and then headquarters would take up the center. In the spoke method the entire element heads up into the center the headquarters platoon drops off then the NCO for each platoon comes back from their section of the perimeter links up with their platoon and brings them forward into their sector and then they filter in along their sector making sure to link up with the platoons on their flanks to form the perimeter. Now, after you are in position, you will take a security halt from operations for a bit, for about a half hour or so, once again making sure that you were not followed, that the enemy isn't ready to attack you. Then you begin your priorities of work. Each squad should already be assigned in each platoon sector where they're going to be at. And their troops should already be pulling security inside their squad sectors. So this would be 1st Squad, 1st Platoon, 2nd Squad, 3rd Platoon, 3rd Squad, 1st Platoon, and so forth around.
The squad leader will assign each two-man buddy team their sectors of fire, where their primary sector of fire is, their secondary, and where their final protective line of fire would be. The final protective line of fire would is typically sighted down high-speed avenues of approach in that area. Now, when we begin our priorities of work and our defensive builds, you will be using this acronym, ACOCA, O-C-O-K-A. Observation, cover and concealment, situational obstacles, key terrain, and avenues of approach. The answers to each of those letters determines how your perimeter is going to be set up. Where you're going to locate your key weapon systems like your machine guns, grenade launchers, mortars, recordless rifles, whatever you have. Now once you get those weapon systems into, into place each buddy team is going to start work on their fighting positions. Uh, you're going to start with hasties and you're going to move up to deliberate positions. So down here at the six, typically <clears throat> we would locate a machine gun team and they would be in an L-shaped position. And then everybody else would be in V-shaped hasties or in foxholes along the perimeter. When they are done digging their fighting positions, a security patrol will be sent out by each platoon. They will leave from their left flank, go out and come back in on their right flank where they meet up with the flanking platoon. The security patrol should be from four to six personnel led by one NCO. They should have one automatic weapon with them and the rest of them should have rifles or shotguns, whatever your unit has. When they're going out, that is the time they will also set up their LPOPs, their listening post observation posts. Now third platoon down here, they're going to set up an LPOP down here before the edge of the tree line. Second platoon over here, they're going to set up one near the edge of the tree line over here watching the river. First platoon, they'll set up one over here wherever it's determined that the enemy could sneak up into the perimeter. While the security patrol is going on, you will be in placing any claymores that you have that you determine need to go out. You'll be putting out your trip flares. You will also be putting out any IEDs if you determine you need to put one in because there's a high speed avenue of approach. Once that's accomplished, each position will write up a range card. That range card, once it is done, a copy of it is given to the squad leader. The squad leader then combines them into a squad sector sketch. The squad leader then gives a copy of the squad sector sketch to the platoon leader. The platoon leader then makes a platoon sector sketch and gives a copy of it to the headquarters. While that is being done, the troops will be setting up their alternate fighting positions a little bit further into the perimeter. After they have accomplished that, the squad leader will point out to them where their squad's sleeping area will be. That will be where they set up their poncho hooches, their tents, whatever they're going to be doing for their shelters from inclement weather. 
Once that's completed, you will begin time for doing weapons maintenance, equipment maintenance, and also chow time. No more than 50% of your element should be pulled off the line to do that. You should have at least 50% still on the perimeter. Now, while that's going on, the headquarters will be determining what operations are going to be conducted and it will send that information down to the platoon leader. The platoon leader will then notify the squad leaders. The squad leaders will then go through and draw up their guard duty plans and also their sleep plans. And then you begin your occupation. Now, while that's going on on the perimeter, the headquarters has their own priorities of work. The first thing they do will be setting up their talk, their tactical operations center in the center of the perimeter. They will then establish their own internal defensive positions. They also typically make up your uh, quick reaction force for the uh, perimeter if there's an attack and that's included as part of their security plan. The first sergeant and section heads from headquarters will then locate the nearest water source, in this case it is the river. They will also locate any potential sources of food, like the farm field. They will also, if you have the capability, set up the area where the field mess will be. They will set up where the latrine or latrines will be located. You could have one per platoon or one for the entire perimeter. The supply personnel will determine where the supply caches will be located so that each platoon can get to them in an emergency if you are found, if you're stuck here and you're in a siege situation. <coughs> Once that is complete, the headquarters personnel will set up their sleep area, which should be located near the talk. They will begin their weapons maintenance and chow rotations. And the NCOs of the headquarters section will then determine the talk duty roster who's going to be monitoring radios and field phones at what time. And then they will also establish their sleep plan. And that covers the basic occupation of that assembly area or base camp. Now for all my brothers in the Patriot and Militia Movement, always remember Essayons.